Hi everyone, I'm Kei, Senior Enterprise Service Architect at Fastry. Today I'm here to talk to you about building a better developer experience with WebAssembly based edge service platforms. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll explore how WebAssembly is supercharging service platforms, making our lives easier and our applications faster. First, let's review some common challenges that organizations typically face when implementing platform engineering with serverless technologies. Imagine your organization needs to deploy servers in a serverless manner, like writing some logic for cloud functions or Lambda, or spinning up some containers in other cloud platforms. Operating them yourself means you will need to monitor uptime and pick deployment locations with latency in mind. Of course, you also need to promptly respond to vulnerability reports such as CVEs. Additionally, you must prepare your SRE team for continuous operations while designing the system to minimize their operational overhead as much as possible. Moreover, we couldn't overlook the extra costs involved in preventing cold starts or other concurrency considerations too. With edge service technology, you don't need to worry too much about extra latency caused by distance from your servers. As you can see in the slide, um, you can see, as opposed to the previous slides, uh, you, uh, which has only one green circle uh, in Australia, Sydney, uh, at the edge service technology, we have many green circles, uh, which means the edge pops. And once you build and deploy your code to our or the any edge um, service platforms, then your code will be distributed to all of the edge pops uh, globally distributed and available. Of course, monitoring overhead will be offloaded if you go with uh, managed services like this. But another notable benefit is a huge reduction in the number of dependencies compared to bare metal or container based technologies. WebAssembly requires far fewer dependencies, making your environment more secure and easier to operate from a security perspective. By the way, just a quick note, Fastly offers a free tier that includes the edge computing platform we are talking about in this session. You can create an account without providing any credit card information and try it out. If you are interested, please feel free to give it a try. Let's shift back to our core topic and explore the mechanics and development of WebAssembly software. I'll start exploring from WebAssembly, often abbreviated as WASM. At its core, WebAssembly is a new type of code a binary instruction format designed for a stack-based virtual machine. It serves as a portable comparison target for a variety of high-level programming languages such as Rust and Go or Tango. WebAssembly brings a few key benefits such as near-native performance, portability following compile once run anywhere principle, and language flexibility too. But how does WebAssembly, initially conceived for the browser environment, operate effectively on servers or at the edge network? This is where the WebAssembly system interface, which is known as WAGI, plays a crucial role. WAGI provides a standardized mechanism for WebAssembly modules to interact with system resources that are typically restricted in a browser sandbox. These include capabilities like accessing file system, managing clocks, or generating random numbers. 
It is this interface that elevates WebAssembly to a first-class citizen in non-browser environments, making it an ideal technology for serverless functions deployed at the edge. To execute WebAssembly modules, particularly in server-side or edge environments, a robust runtime is essential. Wasm time is a prominent production-ready WebAssembly runtime, renowned for its speed, security features, and strict adherence to WASM standards, including WAGI. So we are utilizing this WASM time as a um, runtime, uh, platform runtime that we are um, um, based on. Moving on, to, moving on to the right, the Bytecode Alliance is a nonprofit organization that includes influential members from across the tech industry, such as Fastly, Mozilla, Intel, and Microsoft. Its mission is to create secure new software foundations built upon standards like WebAssembly and WAGI. The Alliance is dedicated to fostering robust implementations, driving the evolution of these standards and ensuring that WebAssembly is a reliable and trustworthy technology for a wide range of applications. Their work provides confidence that WASM is not merely an experimental technology, but a stable platform suitable for production deployments. Programming language support for WebAssembly is expanding rapidly. Although the examples here are a non-exhaustive list of languages, you can see that each language has been dedicating significant amount of time, significant amount of time to WebAssembly compatibility. This trend extends to many other languages, including Swift and C Sharp, which are officially incorporating WebAssembly targets. As a result, WebAssembly has now become stable enough for everyday use. Beyond speed and portability, a critical reason WebAssembly is exceptionally well suited for edge servers environments is its strong security model, which was an integral part of its design from the outset. In the interest of time, I won't go into detail about each item here, like sandboxing, sandboxing or memory safe, those stuff, but the corrective implication of these security features is the ability to run code with a significantly higher degree of confidence and security at the edge. Imagine you would like to run um, some, um, some server uh, like MCP server, um, where you might need to sometimes um, test untrusted third-party code that you haven't used before. In such scenarios, uh, strong isolation as provided by WASM's sandboxing is paramount to prevent cross-tenant interference or attacks. Wasm's sandboxing is notably more lightweight and offers faster startup times compared to traditional container-based isolation methods. This combination of robust security, security and operational efficiency makes WebAssembly uniquely suited for scaling servers functions securely and cost-effectively at the edge. With this basic understanding of underlying technologies in mind, let's dive into actual sample code and demos showing how WebAssembly works. Um, first off, I am showing the Hello World type of program, which um, uh, is really simple code like this, just a few lines of code, uh, which only have a print function here. Um, 
So you can expect that this program will be supposed to output the hello string. And if I have this file uh, with file name main.go, then if I run go mod init command to initialize the project and run go build command to build this program um, into the WebAssembly binary format. Then uh, if I look inside the folder, then I can see that the main.wasm file is successfully generated. And then this is the interesting part of this slide, uh, which is about the running the WebAssembly binary format uh, using the um, WebAssembly runtime, which is uh, wasm time in this case. Unlike the unlike the standard on executable like L format or the Windows executable, uh, wasm wasm binary format is not executable. Uh, it requires you to bring um, WebAssembly runtime like wasm time, and with this runtime, you can make this program work and say hello here. So this is how WebAssembly is working. Another example here uh, is a bit more advanced example, uh, which consists of the go routine and channel here. Uh, and even go routine or channel, this really um, the helpful, useful uh, feature in Go uh, is available in WebAssembly. This time, instead of Go, um, I used the TinyGo as a compiler uh, to show the capability of the TinyGo uh, supporting the WebAssembly. Uh, and um, just like I did in the, in the previous slide, if I pass the, um, the WebAssembly binary output, uh, compiled by the TinyGo compiler to the wasm time, then what I would get is that this text, which means that this go routine and channel was successfully working. Moving on to the fast recompute, the edge computing platform example, a uh, still simple code, uh, which uh, apparently is do, trying to do the hardware world type of stuff with edge computing. Uh, infrastructure. And then you'll notice that the fstactb.subfunk, it looks like it, this is maybe kind of the server uh, side logic, which is waiting for the connection from the user browser. And once the HTTP request is incoming from the browser, then this code will, will be executed on the HPOP. And then instantly, that HTTP request uh, will uh, trigger this edge pop logic and uh, user will be instantly receive uh, back from edge pop uh, saying world in this case. So this is just a quick, quite simple, uh, the most simple example in the edge computing world. And it's still a simple example, but uh, a bit more um, inter interesting stuff in this case is the, the proxy type of the example. So same sub func um, function is used here. So which means that still uh, waiting for the connection from the, the browser. But this time, uh, what this program is trying to do is that the first the add some authorization header to the request. Um, and then um, then in the next line, um, this edge logic will forward uh, the request to the backend server called origin uh, with the authorization header is added so that the, um, yeah, the backend server can, uh, can, can validate the request is valid or not. And finally, the, the browser side will be receiving the response, the result from the origin server. So uh, this uh, proxy stack uh, can be really implemented really easily with this readable code. And this is the last example of a faster compute is this time 
uh, showing the capability of the reading the data from the edge data store. Um, so uh, edge computing platform typically have a um, the data store like KB store or the some configuration store. And then I'm showing in this case, uh, yeah, still really simple code, right? Uh, still a few lines of code, but you can just quickly write up some the data uh, retrieve code uh, with it without fearing too much about the infrastructure stuff, which is so cool. And then this is the last demo that I wanted to show in this session, uh, which is about the how you can build and deploy your code to the edge computing platform. Uh, on the left side, uh, uh, you can see the fastly compute init command. This is the, the first command that you're going to need to run. And then just you can initialize your project. And then on the right side, the next command uh, you would type and run is fastly compute publish. And this is actually the um, everything. I mean, this is all you need to uh, type and run on the, your terminal. And then once this command is executed, then what what uh, this command will do is that build the project and deploy to the edge platform, which only takes uh, one or two minutes. So it's really instant to build and deploy your code to the platform. Um, so yeah, this is the example. And again, um, the, we have a free tier uh, with developer account so that, and, and also the no credit card required. So it's really easy to try out. So please feel free to um, visit the fastly.com page if you are interested. And if you have any thoughts or questions, we I am happy to uh, get some the email from you, but otherwise uh, you uh, might want you might want to see uh, what the community members are uh, talking about in the community space. So that uh, please feel free also to uh, visit the our community site, which is uh, community.fast.com. So that's pretty much it for today. So thanks for uh, listening. Uh, hope this session is somewhat uh, helpful and interesting for you. Uh, have a nice day. Thanks.